I think some of this conversation goes to what Evelyn has brought up several times about the the broader market of, you know, we need to have strong, innovative companies that provide a democratic alternative for a lot of these technologies so that our allies do not feel that their only choice is to not have the most technologically advanced um, systems that they need, whether it's things like 5G or search since that was just brought up or, or whatever else, um, and that their only alternative is to go to the Chinese equivalent because they want to have more forward technologies. What we've seen is that the light touch approach to regulation typically pursued by the US has enabled a lot of innovation and has enabled kind of a continued competition in the global marketplace that when you look at where the top technology companies are, there's a, a rather even divide between the US and mm. China, but yet we haven't really had to have that market, the that government intervention driving the market in terms of what we tell these companies their research and development needs to look like, which if if you don't mind, is is something that I kind of want to respond to to Oren on. Please. Um, yeah. My focus is on the antitrust side, not not as much on the national security side. So I defer to to some of you with more expertise on that. But the way I look at this is also in the broader debate over industrial policy and what, if anything, there should be in terms of government intervention in the research and design process. And I think it is important to to think about the fact that it is so hard to predict the direction that these things need to go and that we've seen these conversations before as well around other technologies only to see that the marketplace is able to respond as well, if not better than a government directed strategy. Yeah.